السلام علیکم اب آواز کلیئر آ رہی ہے ایکسلینٹ چلو ٹھیک ہے لیٹس گیٹ اسٹارٹ اوکے جزاک اللہ اینڈ آئی ہوپ ایوری ون کین سی مائی اسکرین ایز ویل ٹھیک ہے اوکے لیٹ گیٹ اسٹارٹ ایٹ سم ڈیو ٹو سم پرابلم ان دا مائکرو فون آئی ڈونٹ نو تو ایم گوئن ٹو اسٹارٹ رائٹ ناؤ اوکے سو ٹوڈے از ٹاپک از سم تھنگ نون ایز یوزر ڈیفائنڈ فنکشنس یوزلی واٹ وی ڈو از لیٹ وی رائٹ کوڈ واٹ ایور وی وانٹ ٹو ڈو ان اوور سی پلس پلس پروگرام وی جسٹ رائٹ دا کوڈ ان دا مین فنکشن دیٹ مین فنکشن which does the main thing like here i have written the main function and it is uh, performing some tasks which we have asked to uh, for it to do usually what happens is that uh, the actual software programs they run in thousands and maybe millions of lines of code so what actually what um, and usually not uh, not single person does not develop the whole application um, we usually divide the software code in multiple subroutines or sub programs so that uh, each person let's say we have a 10 person team working on some application and that application performs different task so what we can do is we can uh, subdivide the code to be written for each person so that each person can divide uh, can write only the part of the code okay and that part of the code which we call a sub program and some someone might call it a sub routine because routine says as essentially a routine is essentially a series of steps for the computer to perform so let's say we have like a thousand steps to perform for the computer what we can do is that we assign let's say we assign person a to write for example 100 lines of code and person b another 100 lines of code and person c another 100 lines of code and so on and so forth so that each uh, team member writes a separate kind of code and then, then we combine that code to make up an application so that subroutine or sub program which um, separate users write or maybe it is possible that you write yourself are known as functions and we have used some functions such as in previous programs in which we uh, solve the quadratic equation we use some a function known as s square root function in which we pass a value of some number let's say 2.3 and wherever the function is called wherever we have written it will return the value let's say if we call it uh, the square root of let's say 4.0 so wherever the function is called that uh, in that place value of 2 would be returned so how it works i'm going to explain that in a moment but we have to understand that this square root function definition has was definitely written by some user or by some programmer and that um, function definition was uh, included in the cmath header file so if we want to use Uh, some functions which are which we call something known as like built-in functions of the C++ compiler um, those built-in functions are usually uh, included in the header file such as if we include if we include a cmath header file this header file contains the trigonometry function this this header file contains the uh, definitions of the logarithmic functions uh, as well as uh, hyperbolic functions and other and maybe square root function i mean if you want to make some kind of a calculator you have to include the cmath header file and this cmath header file includes the definition of all those functions by definition i mean the code of the function okay so what we mean by the code of the function obviously the function has some kind of a name which we call by well, any name make sure the name you are writing for your own function for your own user defined function um is uh, unique and uh, does not use the reserved keywords uh, or the operator keyword something like that which are reserved for the c++ language do not m- make your own function which is like sine function or cos function because that is already built in and then the function has in the round brackets a parameter list which we call um in easier language which we call arguments for example if i'm using a sine function so i le- i just uh, declare float uh, a equals to sine and i just write uh, 
two radians, two point zero radians. So this two point zero, this two point zero is the parameter for the sine function, and this sine function has some code which we do not see, but it's written in the C method or file. Okay, so this sine function, I mean, it uh, implements some kind of a Taylor series. If you understand what Taylor series is, or you might see in your some mathematics course, it's a uh, addition of the one over one factorial minus three over three factorial plus five over five factorial, something like that, because sine is an odd function. Uh, but anyway, but this is the uh, argument, and the sine function takes this argument or this parameter and uh, performs the sine of two radians and whatever that number is whatever that sine of two radian is what I don't know the value uh, let's say the value is I don't know let's say the value is 0.123 or something like that I don't know the value right now I mean wherever the function is called it's actually returning some value and this value we assign it to some variable obviously the variable uh, is, a, is a float a floating point variable so it's expecting a fractional value now what we do is it's important that uh, sometimes we divide the uh, big code into multiple programmers and each programmer write his or her own function which he or she is assigned to do. It is also possible that you are uh, writing a big program and you need to call a code block again and again. I mean in the previous week we saw that if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to run some code uh, in a repetition so you are go you are going to use the loops such as for loop or do while loop or while loop which is really simple thing to do that as long as the condition is true you have to keep on repeating the task now it is also possible that in some parts of the program you have to recall the whole code so one possible way to do that whatever task you want to do you just write that code wherever you want to use that it is also possible that you write that code once and name it with a function name okay you write that code once where do you write that I'm going to explain that don't worry too much about it but that uh, you should understand this concept that let's say you want to call the code again and again and let's say that code has like 15 lines so what you can do is whenever you need that code you just copy paste that code in your main function and your main function becomes really long uh, because it has like most multiple uh, instances or multiple copies of wherever you want to call that code another way to do that is you write that code only once and then you name that code with some let's say your own name or some function name and then you call that function so whenever you call that function that code is called and the compiler uh, handles that code and your main function becomes really small that wherever you want to call that code you just call it by the name so that's another way to explain how these functions uh, work so let's try using that example I'm not I, I'm sure you probably do not understand what I'm talking about right now but I'm going to go through a simple example so that um, you will you will understand what we do over here so let's uh, take this example in this example first we look at the familiar parts we have included the IO stream we are using the standard namespace which we have done for last about eight weeks now ignore this part right now just ignore it and what we are going to do is we are um, we have written a main function just like we always do integer main void and if you can see that main is actually a function it has the round brackets that uh, with the argument list and the void says that it is not expecting any arguments so you can just leave it empty or you can just write void, void if you want now the function body starts at this curly brackets and ends at this curly bracket and then what I've done is that I have declared two variables integer m and n then I've written a simple do while loop and this do while loop will take the input from the user and the first input is assigned to variable m and the second input is assigned to variable n then I have written some C out and I've written some string don't worry too much about what I have written over here just forget it I mean you can just write anything you want it's just a simple string enclosed within two uh, two double quotes okay now the important part is that I have called a function the name of that function is max max function and I have passed the values of M 
here and n here so what it what it does is that i have called a function max but this function max is not defined by c++ i need to tell the compiler that what is this max function is this max function definition is given here okay so the function definition starts at the curly brackets and at the curly brackets this is the function name and these are the parameters or the list of parameters or some people call it list of arguments such as if you write uh, if i write a sign function if i am passing some value 2.3 this 2.3 is a parameter or is an argument to the sign function so sign function will compute the value of 2.3 sign and return the whatever the value of sign 2.3 is wherever the function is called so this max function the name of this function is max so the first line is known as the uh, is known as the um, function head okay so function head is it has a name it has a parameter list and it also has a return type return type so what the function is going to return it is possible that functions don't return anything it, they might do something but they don't return any value it is also possible that the functions functions do not sorry um, functions do not take any argument it is also possible that uh, I mean if I want to write a function such as I could have written void max void that means this function does not accept any argument this function does not return any value okay if i could if i r r write void max and then i write integer x that means that this function uh accept one argument but it doesn't return any value it is also possible that the function returns some value and the type of that return uh, or and the return type of that value is integer and it doesn't accept any value for the argument and it is also possible that the function returns a value and it also expects some value the integer x or maybe integer y if you want to call it or maybe multiple arguments there is no essential limit in the previous uh, some program there is a limit of 64 possible parameters but they become quite large but the, the, I mean we just don't uh, worry too much about it but they are actually how you can define the function depends on what you want the function to do whether you want to pass some value to some function you have to declare those parameters let's say here and here let's say you do not want to pass any value to the function you just write void in the round brackets let's say you want to return some value and that value could be integer that value could be float that value could be double as well so whatever value you want to return you do not name that value you just write the type of that value it is also possible that you do not want to return any value so just write void before that so if you can see this main function actually returns an integer after completing a task so that's why after end of the program we usually write return zero uh, after uh, running this program so um, I mean if you do not even write it the compiler just inserts it for you because it's a default way to write a function for a uh, max uh, main, main function main function is uh, well a special kind of function okay coming back to uh, what we have done so far I mean, I'm just going to um, I'm just going to um, remove these or comment these lines. So just forget it. I mean, this compiler doesn't read it. Just to recap, what we have done, we have included the IO stream. We are using the name standard namespace and we have written the main function. Okay, and uh, we are uh, written the main function, and this main function is calling the max function and this max function accepts a value of m and n and these m and n were typed in by the u will be typed in by the user so these m and n values would be passed to the max function now pay attention clearly what happens here I mean the max function it takes the two values and returns whatever the maximum value is okay do not think uh, that this task could have easily be done in the main function we are not going into the utility of uh, whether we should be doing this or we should be but we are trying to understand the concept of function or subroutines and uh, here this value of m and n would be passed to the values of 
x and y this is the function head and the function body is enclosed in it within the curly brackets okay so this value m and n would be passed let's say i type the values 4 in place of m and i type the values 5 in place of n okay so this 4 would be passed in place of m and 5 would be passed to m so this 4 would be assigned to x and 5 would be assigned to y now what happens is that if x is less than y okay 4 is less than y we say return y that wherever the function is called return a value okay so if i pass the value 4 comma 5 here this 4 comma 5 i mean whatever wherever the function is called it will they it will return a value of 5 else return x that means that if uh, the first value uh, is greater than let's say if i type in like uh, 10 or comma 6 that would have returned 10 so first let's run this code it's going to return y or is going to return x and this x and y they have the values of m and n so i'm going to first uh, run this code compile it and um, okay so that's I, I'm going to type the value, let's say, if I type the value 4 and the next value is 5. Four. So the first value is assigned to 4 and the next value is assigned to 5. So the, what it's going to do is, it's going to print this whole statement as well as it's going to pass the values for max 4, 5. So it's going to call this function. And it's going to, I mean, backslash t maximum of uh, 4, 5 is here the value and where 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 we call the function it's actually returning the value 5 so what happens is now just pay attention this lecture is not too long okay the concept is important here we pass the value 4 comma 5 this 4 comma 5 are passed in place of m comma n so this m is mapped or directly relates to x and this n is mapped or directly relates to y so this x contains a value 4 and this y contains a value 5. Now this 4, if 4 is less than 5, we are saying that wherever the function is called, which is here, wherever the function is called, return 5. So wherever the function is called, it's going to return 5. Okay, so that's what 5 is we are saying over here. Now if I write, for example, um, 10, 6 so it's going to return 10 so i'm it, actually this is within the do while loop so it's going to run as as long as the first value is not zero so it's so keep on running as long as the first value is not zero essentially an infinite loop um i, I mean not in i mean it has an exit condition so we have explained that earlier so it just keep on running so if i write 10 comma 6 so this 10 is assigned to m and 6 is assigned to n so the first value we are calling the function max 10 comma 6 here i mean this is just a string so i mean it's not saying that it's calling this function i'm uh, typing it in the string so max com 10 comma 6 is called here 10 is a uh, uh, map to x and 6 is mapped to y so 10 less than y 10 less than uh, 6 is false so it's going to use else return x which is 10 so this return x this 10 do you see this value this 10 is is a return in this place okay so if wherever the function is called it's going to return an integer value and we define that by the return type okay so this wherever the function is called here the function is called is going to return some value and that return value could be either x or could be either y okay so th this is a simple function and whenever let's say uh, in somewhere down the program somewhere down the program i want in, in the main code i want to reuse or i want to recall the max function so i just write uh, i mean i could just write uh, max for example uh, 2 comma 3 or if i somewhere down the program if i want to recall the function i could just call max com a comma b or something like that whenever i want to do that so that I do not need to write this code again and again. I mean, this is essentially two lines. So, I mean, if you want to, you can just use it. But uh, 
this is i mean try imagining if you want to have a function let's say if you want to implement a square root function yourself or if you want to implement some trigonometric function yourself i mean they could have uh, maybe hundreds of lines so if you want to repeat the task you either you can copy paste those hundreds of lines again and again so that your your main function would become really large and not that readable however if you just name that i mean if you just write that code and call name it with something you know with this argument list and maybe, maybe a return type you can just call those functions wherever you want to so that your main function code becomes a lot more uh, cleaner and i mean much more simple to read that look we are just calling this function even though even let's say if you are calling the square root function let's say square 2.4 or something like that uh, you are calling the whole code block which is written for the square root function you are not repeating the code block again and again so your uh, this program becomes really simple to read that whatever you, whatever you want to do you just call that function and that's it and now this thing i mean this uh, concept of uh, calling those functions and uh, you know i mean this repeating i mean this line i mean if i just write uh, zero 02 i mean it's going to end the program because the first input is equal to zero so it's going to end the loop right here now the coming back to our main topic there are actually three ways to define a function what you can do is you can you give the function definition above the main function and call it in the main function just as we have uh, done here that we have uh, given the definition above the main function so that the compiler knows that this max function is defined here so whenever we call this he already knows uh, the compiler already knows that the, we have to run the, it has to run this code okay another way to uh, declare a, a define a function is how you declare a variable it's really simple same code here I've written the main function sorry I've written the main function here, just as we have done here, but there is a slight difference. I have given the definition of main fun of the max function below the main function. It is also possible. But the problem is the compiler wouldn't know that what this max function is because it reads line by line. To resolve this problem of the compiler, it depends on you whether you are whether you like it, this thing. I mean, I prefer this thing. Um, here I have given. I have declared something known as a function prototype. Okay, I am saying to the compiler, look, there is a function. The name of the function is max. It's going to accept two values. You can use integer x or y, whatever you want. It's not even necessary to write the names of these variables. Uh, it depends really. And I'm saying to the compiler, look, there is a function max. It accepts two integers and returns an integer. But the compiler, once it sees the semicolon, it's just like if you how you declare a variable, okay? So you are declaring a function prototype. And the compiler, once it sees this line, it will search for where that code for that function is given. Okay, so where that code the function is given. So now we have declared a function, but we, are, we haven't defined the function yet. There's a difference. This is a function declaration. And the, within the curly bracket, this is a function definition. So I write the return type, I write the name of the function, I write the argument list, and I just write the definition. So the compiler, once it sees, the, if, I, if I remove this line, okay? So if I remove this line, or if I comment this line, the compiler would throw up an exception saying that this max function is not defined. How, but if I declare the function, and I'm saying, look, this function is going to be defined up later. So the compiler wouldn't throw up an exception. So once we call this function, the compiler will search for the definition which is given here. <clears throat> so usually some programmers, uh, it depends on your own personal preference. Uh, there are no uh, marks specifically to write the function definition above or below. So if you are writing the function definition below the main function, you just declare it and write the definition below. There is a third way. And for bigger programs, I would suggest you do this that you write the function this is the last thing i need to cover in, in two minutes so this is a this is a uh, write a function definition in another cpp file and this is what usually happens when uh, we have multiple programmers uh, working on the same application and that application has uh, multiple functions and multiple function definitions and multiple data structures for that matter so we just write those function definitions in a separate cpp file so let's say i have a uh, i have a pro 
I'm a programmer and let's say my two friends are also programmers. So I rewrite our own CPP files and let's say the fourth person, maybe one of us, uh, make us main function file. Okay. So let's say I have written the main, I have written that function definition here and I have named that function definition uh, and I've named that CPP file as max.cpp. Okay. I mean, it's not really that necessary uh, to name this, uh, to have the same uh, name, but it's a good practice so that you know that the function definition is given here. Now, just pay attention. The main function is exactly the same which we have uh, written. The main function is exactly the same which we have written. We are writing the function prototype here. That function prototype is uh, given here just as, but we haven't written the definition. The definition is written in CPP file, in max.cpp file. So what we need to do is that we include this CPP file in two double quotes. So actually what, let me show you the directory structure here. This uh, directory structure, okay. This directory structure which we have just developed here. Uh, this directory structure has, this directory has the max file as well as the text max file in the same folder. So I do not need to write the whole path. However, if this max CPP file is in some other path, so I need to write C colon backslash some directory, whatever. I mean, you understand whatever that path is, directory one or whatever, wherever the file is located. So I need to write the whole path over here. But here, uh, since this max.cpp file and this uh, test max.cpp file, which contains the main function, is within is within the um, what we call the same directory, I do not need to write the whole path. So it depends. Uh, in the exam, usually you are right to ask. You are asked to write some function. And it depends whether you make a separate CPP file. It depends. I mean, it depends on your own personal preference. Usually, our programs are not that long to warrant a really large. Uh, I mean, I mean, so many separate CPP files. But it's good to know that let's say multiple programmers are working for the same application. Uh, they can write their they can write their own CPP files. And what we need to do is we just include those CPP files. Make sure you do not include them with these brackets, okay? We do not include them with greater and less than brackets because uh, these brackets are reserved for uh, the standard header files contained in the C++ library, okay? Uh, one more thing which is, uh, I mean, worth mentioning is that let's say you, are, you have written a function and sometime later and you have included that in the CPP file, okay? You are not writing in the main function. Sometime later, you improve the code, okay? You improve the code and you make it much more efficient, even though I cannot find any way to make this thing much more efficient. But let's say you have written some uh, custom-made function and you have improved the code. So for that, you do not need to change the main file. You just send the CPP file, the CPP file and this file, and you just include this file in the main function. So some programmer which has changed the code the other programmer which is using that code in the main function doesn't even need to know what changes have been made in the in that CPP file. I mean, this is a use and this is extensively used whenever we are revising the code or whenever we are um, improving the code. And uh, sometimes this code hiding actually uh, helps in software development because you do not really need to know what's how some functions actually work. You just need to know that what this function does what are the arguments and what is this return type? That's all you need to know. Let, let me, for example, you're driving a car. You really don't know. I mean, in the rain, rainy weather, do not drive the car because the car is round. Okay, but in the, um, let's say you're driving a car, you really don't know how the engine works, but you don't know about how, what the steering wheel does, what the gear does, what the clutch, brake, and accelerator pedal does, but you do not really need to know how the engine works or what is the fuel injection and what are the gear ratios. Really don't need to know these things. You're just using the car, using the interface provided by the company, which is the steering wheel, accelerator, clutch, and brake, and maybe the gear lever. Um, 
how it, the company implements those functions, maybe in the diesel engine, maybe in the petrol engine, or maybe some other kind of engine, it simply doesn't bother you because you are just interested in driving the car. Similarly, the programmer which is using this function, who is using this function, doesn't even want to know that how this function is implemented. It's only interested in that as long as it's implemented and as long as the name is known, it's going to use that line and call that function. So the details would be of this function would be in uh, lecture, recorded lecture uh, 28, 29, and 30. So make sure you see that and make sure you um, you um, first watch this lecture maybe again and something and that's it. Okay, so don't go anywhere. Uh, I'm going to take the attendance. How many students are present? So we have one thing. Okay, so attendance have been taken. Now, if there are any questions, uh, write them down or EGD, inshallah, I will upload this file. And now, uh, eight minute. I need to save this file. PPP file and this HTML file. Okay, so now everyone just log off and uh, if anybody wants to ask any question, he or she can write in the chat, chat window. I'm here, available. Okay. Um, mid ka exam jo hai, uh, date change ho gai hai. Computers and programming ka Monday ko nahi hai. Computers and programming ka jo mid hai, yaar, make minute check karte bata do. Mera khal mein change ho hai. Yaar, wo Eid ka kisra dena hai. I think it's the third day of Eid. I'm not so sure. Eight minute. Jumay ko Eid hai, hafte ko Eid hai. Hafte ko Eid hai, no? Wait a minute. Um, eight minute. Message check karne do. Kaan thaw hai. Haan, computers and programming ka jo mid hai, the, program, the mid exam of computers and programming would be on Saturday, 8th August. Okay, I'm going to write that. 8th uh, August, Saturday. Okay, that's a mid date. And the syllabus for mid is uh, lecture number, recorded lecture 1 to 15. Okay, ye hai, uh, recorded lecture and um, live lecture live lecture one two five um, four kinds of questions uh, number one is uh, write a program to do something simple questions uh, if you can do the practice problem which I've discussed in the um, live lecture you can uh, easily do that I mean if I uh, go to uh, lecture topics topics Lecture topics kahan pe? Here. Achha, isme, uh, look, bhai dekho, karne ki kaam dekh pe. Lecture 3 ko achhi dekh na, lecture 4 or lecture 5. Is, I mean, whatever you see in these problems, uh, this is important, okay? Now you go to, I mean, other things are just an explanation. And there are no practice problems for the uh, conversion of uh, within number systems. So you need to practice that. Uh, for that, from decimal to binary, binary to decimal, hexadecimal to octal, and so on and so forth, from anywhere, anywhere. The easiest way to do any conversion is just remember this. Convert any number into binary and then go to any other number system. That is the simplest thing to do. Okay, for twos complement, you have to see lectures 10 and uh, I mean, you should not take the ones complement and add one, that's it. And then to floating point, they will be, um, they will be, kya hoga floating point? Floating point, there will be some problem related to, uh, you have to convert the numbers, number conversions. Okay, from lecture 1 to 15, that is, I mean, from lecture 1 to 15, that's it. Um, you will be asked to write some simple code. You, it is also possible you are asked to uh, figure out some error, whether some semicolon or some bracket is missing or some closing bracket is missing or something like that, some syntax errors. And, uh, and you detect some error, okay? And then uh, maybe correct those errors as well and write the, and you, are also, you could also be asked to, what would be the output of that code without running the compiler? You are asked to write the output of the code and make sure you attempt your midterm 
make sure uh, you attempt your midterm on a laptop computer okay mother say memo mcqs mcqs hain yes there are mcqs there are short question answers but you have do not attempt your midterm on mobile phone attempt your midterm on your computer in which you have some keyboard because you need to type the code okay you need to type the code you need to time the answer timing to same hai timing to jo announce hoye the sirf date change hui hai टाइमिंग तो वही है जो आपके उसमें लिखे में या नेट इश्यू दे विल बी टाइम आई थिंक यू आर गिवन टू आवर्स सो मेक श्योर यू हैव द इंटरनेट यार ये यूनिवर्सिटी का मसला है ऐसे मैं क्या करूंगा नहीं मोबाइल पर नहीं होगा मोबाइल पर नहीं होगा मोबाइल पे नहीं हो रहा नॉट है मोबाइल देखो मोबाइल पे अगर तुम अगर आप किसी तरह कनेक्ट कर सकते हो कीबोर्ड को ठीक है इफ यू कैन कनेक्ट की बोर्ड यूर मोबाइल फोन फिर तो बहुत आल तरीके से मोबाइल पे भी हो जाएगा क्योंकि तो आपको आंसर टाइप करने सही है आंसर्स टाइप करने इसमें हम लोगों ने वो ऑप्शन खत्म कर दिया है इन विच यू हैव टू राइट द आंसर्स बाय योर हैंड एंड टेक द पिक्चर्स बिकॉज सम स्टूडेंट्स कंप्लेन नॉट इन माय सेक्शन बट सम इन अदर सेक्शन दैट दे हैव मतलब उनका पास कैमरे कोई ऐसे थे नहीं मतलब के या तो मतलब मसले थे कैमरे के तो इस वजह से यू हैव टू आंसर टाइप मतलब यू हैव टू राइट द कोड आई मीन इफ आई आर राइट अ कोड टू मेक अ सिंपल कैलकुलेटर देन यू हैव टू राइट द कोड टाइपिंग का मतलब है कीबोर्ड से टाइप करना यू हैव टू राइट इंटीजर मेन एंड समथिंग लाइक दैट इस तरह के आपको ना पूरी टाइपिंग करनी होगी उसमें आपको टाइम दिया जाएगा ठीक है टाइप करने का मतलब है यस सीरियसली भाई क्या मतलब मजाक नहीं कर रहा तो इसमें आपको टाइप करना होगा उसकी वजह यह है कि वो सम स्कैन की जरूरत नहीं होगी नहीं 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 एट माई पेपर में स्कैन की जरूरत नहीं है सीपीपी के मिड टर्म में देर इज नो नीड फॉर स्कैनिंग यू कैन कोड इतना लंबा नहीं है मैक्सिमम फाइव टू टेन लाइन का कोड होगा ओके एंड द आंसर्स व्हाट वुड बी द आउटपुट ऑफ दिस कोड उसमें भी आपको एक एक लाइन के आंसर देने होंगे ठीक है हाँ उसमें uh, जो वो है नंबर कन्वर्जन नंबर कन्वर्जन में यू हैव टू टाइप इन द नंबर्स दैट दिस मल्टीप्लाई बाय दिस टू शो द स्टेप्स ओके टू शो द स्टेप्स सीपी के अलावा चल जाएगा नहीं uh, देखें वट एवर आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग हेयर इज ओनली एप्लीकेबल टू कंप्यूटर्स एंड प्रोग्रामिंग ओके गूगल फॉर्म्स पे होगा मिड Uh, any other subject you ask the respective teacher that w- what the format is for the computers and programming uh, the format is uh, f- three or four kind of question mcq short question answers what would be the output of this code uh, write the code to do something and find out the error in this code okay these are the type of questions very quickly uh, time khatam hota ja raha hai jisko jana hai ho jaye um conversion kaise karenge direct matlab on screen um conversion number systems ki type in the numbers yaar i mean if i just write look uh, फॉर एग्जाम्पल ट्वेल्व का बाइनरी इक्वेलेंट क्या होता है ठीक है तो यू जस्ट राइट ट्वेल्व का बाइनरी जो भी बनता है वन जीरो वट एवर वन वन बनेगा या वो तो इलेवन बन जाएगा वन वन जीरो जीरो बन जाएगा ठीक है हाँ बास के सिर्फ अगर लिखा होगा इफ यू जस्ट राइट द आंसर ओनली यू जस्ट राइट द आंसर ओनली इफ यू आर आस टू राइट दिस इज स्टेप बाई स्टेप यू जस्ट राइट स्टेप बाई स्टेप ओके इस नेसेसरी टू टर्न ऑन कैमरा एंड मिड ये यही तो मसला था लोगों के पास कैमरे नहीं थे ना जिनके पास कैमरे थे भाई नहीं मुझे नहीं पता आई डोंट नो ये जो उस वक्त इनविजिलेटर होंगे वो जाने और आप जाने मुझे नहीं पता कि मिड टर्म कुछ आया तो था कि वो इनविजिलेशन पता नहीं क्या करेंगे उसमें तो मुझे नहीं पता आई डोंट नो कि वो ऑन करने को कहें या नहीं कहें अक्सर लोगों के साथ यही मसला है कैमरे अगर हैं भी तो वो इतनी अच्छी क्वालिटी के नहीं है कि वो ना स्कैन करके जब उन्होंने तस्वीरें भेजी अपने हैंड रिटेन नोट्स की तो वो पढ़ ही नहीं जा रहे थे कि वो कर क्या रहे हैं तो उसके लिए हमने ये किया कि भाई इसको आप जो भी आंसर है वो आप ना कंप्यूटर पर टाइप करते हैं हमारे आंसर को इतने बड़े नहीं होते सिटी में आपका मिनट जो है ना वो बहुत आराम से आधे घंटे से पैंतालीस मिनट में हो जाएगा ठीक है वो टाइम ज्यादा इसलिए दिया जा रहा है कि वो खुदा खास किसी का इंटरनेट का मसला हो या वो हो तो वो दो घंटे के अंदर कंप्लीट करके दे दे ठीक है भाई टाइम खत्म हो गया जिसको रहना है वो यहाँ पे रहे बाकी हैंगअप कर लें और डेट्स इट अल्लाह हाफिज